Welcome back to XOR Engineer Training. This is part 17, Field Display Scripts. In this video, we'll use a field display, display script to change how a field displays on the new edit form for an incident within XOR. And with that, let's get to it. Field Display Scripts allow us to change how and what a field presents to a user. You can find Field Display Scripts by searching for tags and the one for Field Display. In the example script that's out of the box, this particular script will hide a field on the new edit form within XOR. So if you click New Incident, the field will not display. In this video, we're going to build a variation of that where we only display specific values from a field on the new edit and only one value when viewing an incident. Much like our previous video on field change scripts, you need to be aware of the available arguments that you have to you from within a field display script. You can find these on our XOR admin guide under Create Dynamic Fields in Incident Forms. In this case, there are only a limited number of arguments that will be available to us within our field script, specifically things like the field itself, the type of form, be it a new edit form, a closed form, or the summary form that is being displayed, the field itself, and even the user that is viewing the specific field. This can be useful if you want to change how a field displays based on users and even their roles. Now for our particular use case, we'd like to use a field display script to show only the incident types that we want for users that click new incident within XOR. For example, when we click new incident, we are presented with the entire list of incident types within XOR that are currently enabled. In this case, we maybe only want our users to be able to create a, a handful of these from the new incident option and we can use a field display script to achieve that goal. Extremely flexible, we're actually going to store the incident types that we wish to display within an XOR list. To do this, we'll go to Settings, and Advanced, and Lists, and we'll create a list that will hold our incident types. In this way, if we want to display another one, perhaps for that next use case we build, we can just simply update the list without having to modify our code. We'll click Add List, we'll give this a name, and in this case, we'll just paste in a comma-separated list of the incident types we wish to display. In this case, we'll use our unclassified, which is the XOR default, the case type from our case management pack, and the XOR engineer URL alerts that we've been building throughout this series. We'll give this a save, and we'll go over to Automations, and we'll create our new automation. Click New, we'll call this field display incident types from list and save. Once again, removing our example code and we'll add the field display tag to signify that this is used as a field display automation. Once again, we've already pre-built our script. But let's add the code in and walk through what it's doing. To start, we're going to have our field display script check whether or not this script is being executed from the new incident option or being executed while viewing an existing incident. In this case, we'll be using the demisto.incident method and checking whether or not we get an ID back. If we take a look at the available things we have to us from our field display script, we can see that this is available to us, which allows us to determine where this script is being called from. Now, if this is a new incident, then that ID will be empty, which means we can use our execute command and checking our script helper, we can see we have access to the get list command to retrieve the list that we just created. And much like our previous video on automations, the contents of that list are available from item zero and the contents key. In this case, since we entered our list in CSV or comma separated format, we'll just do a split to transform it. Next, we'll quickly strip the white space from the beginning of end of each item in our list, just to account for any human errors. Lastly, 
we'll use return results to return the options that this field should present. In this case, we're going to return hidden as false as we do want this field displayed. If we wanted to hide it, we could simply return hidden as true. Next, we need to return the options, which is looking for an array of options to present to the user. This is what we're getting by using the split as well as stripping the white space to account for errors. Lastly, in our script, if it's not a new incident, we've decided to get a little fancy. In this case, we're going to have our field display script only return the value for the incident type from which it's being displayed. In this case, we'll once again use our demisto.incident method and get the type. And this one will return results, which only includes the one incident type in the array. With that, we can save our script and let's go attach this to our type field and see how it works. Editing the configuration for the incident type field, we can attach our field display script here. Notice that our new script is available as we tagged it with field display. We can hit save and we can go test how this works. We can test our field display script by selecting new incident and then viewing the type. As you can see, we are now only displaying the three types that we provided within our XOR list. If we navigate to an incident, we can validate how this presents from the incident itself. In this case, selecting the type and seeing that we only have the one type available. Lastly, as we're using an XOR list to drive the values that are being displayed, we can quickly add to this. We deploy a new use case, we can edit our list, and add a type. For this, we'll use malware, and maybe we'll add phishing as well. We can hit save. We can go test this again on our new incidents. Click new incident, and you can see that the malware and phishing types were automatically added without us having to modify our code. And with that, let's review what we did in this video. Remember that field display scripts are useful to change how a field presents to XOR users. For example, you can use them to change the values of the incident types based on whether or not it's a new incident or not. You can also use them to display based on the user viewing it and their roles. I'll leave you that one for homework. And with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.